I know, as you're, if somebody's going to be like your worst nightmare of a student, I'm going to go back to what you said, and I'm, and I'm going to, and I'm going to try to pull it apart a little bit, because I'm, I'm curious about what you said there in regard to the Felix Lights. Right. In light of what I read in your book, um, is that I, I, I think the question here is, when you talk about, I think the door is open for skeptics to be able to say, aha, here's how it, here's how it is. This is what happened. I think that if skeptics could step up and explain, here's the explosion, this is where this came from, or these are where all these lights came from, I think there are just, there's a large percentage of the people that right now would fall into the believer category right. that would switch over to the skeptic category and go, ah, oh, he was nothing. But the fact that that, that, that that vacuum exists, there isn't anything that explains it. There isn't anything that comes in and says, this is all that it was, and nobody can replicate it. Nobody's been able to explain the depth and the breadth and the repetition of it. That is what leads to people going, well, until I hear otherwise, I'm going to believe what my eyes tell me. Right. And I, I accept what you're saying about cultural you know, uh, predisposition to believing one way or another. But I think there's a lot of people who are inclined to not believe that there are, for example, UFOs flying overhead every minute, who when they see something like that say, until you can explain to me that that's not a UFO, I'm going to go with what my eyes say. What do you think of that? Well, you know, I think that that has been part of a much larger discussion in American history about the nature of, of science. Um, I actually discussed some of this in the book in relation to the American obsession with the sea serpent um, right. in the 19th century, which is, as you know from the book, really centered on this debate between um, our uh, eyewitness report, uh, again, you know, what I've seen with my own eyes, is, is that good enough? And there were actually very many in the scientific community early in the 19th century that said, sure. Um, I mean, a, a scientific mind like Charles Lyell, the famous geologist, Sea serpents were popping up everywhere in, in, in the American 
I could use for that example of the, the concept of democracy. Uh, it's hard to give an abstract definition of that because you know it meant, meant something very different in in fifth century Athens than it does in 21st century America. And so you know it's really important I think to examine uh, monsters in their historical context. I mean the fact of the matter is the things that scare us change. Uh, the things that make us uneasy about the world change. You were talking about uh, alien science here. That was not a monster in America before the 1940s, uh, really before 1947. Uh, and it's also the case that, you know, anybody that you talk with horror films about will, will say that, you know, when they look back at the horror films of the 1930s and the, the, the classical universal studios, monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, um, you know, one of the first things people say today is, you know, that, that they're just not very scary. They're, they're not, they're not particularly frightening. But people in the 1930s were scared of them. And my sense is that that's because uh, monsters are products of the context that they come out of. Um, so the the monster is always this. Sometimes it's the thing with a thousand eyes. Sometimes it's the serial killer. Sometimes it's the sea serpent. And it all depends on the historical context. You know, I, I think... Uh, I think what's true uh, uh, is that if you, if we went back in time and we looked at the monsters of past generations, uh, today's generation would not be scared. But if we took today's monsters and we went backward, we would scare the living bejesus out of every person on the planet. If we showed them the movie Saw in the 1938, can you imagine what that would be? the impact that that would have had. And, yeah, and it, it's shit so our monsters today, true. to make your point, reflect a very different place where we are uh, culturally. But we'll get into that coming up next. Uh, monsters in America you know, I, I are historical obsession for the hideous that, uh, and the haunting. Some of the older ones are some of the here. best and ones. I, I do want to pick up that conversation that that is about, a good point. about Bigfoot and about some if you of took the other some of the monsters, well, goriest horror movies made within the last few decades which are now thought of in a, a time machine context. and showed them to a 1930s audience. As being a monster the people's heads would explode, and right? They'd probably a working definition that I shit their pants and have uh, hysterical Cole episodes and, and who knows what else. It'd be too much of a shock. Twitter getting a kick out of your live reactions. You're always welcome to stay in touch that way. At Deacon Punnett. Uh, it was my Twitter account, and I tweeted out earlier, you know, tell me about your monsters, and I'll tell you who you are. Are That's the subject here, monsters in America. We'll learn about monsters. that coming up next. Uh, coast to coast. This Do you Hunter. believe in monsters? Sign up now for Coast Zone, our free email newsletter. Get it today at coasttocoastam.com. Who say you don't believe in monsters? Yes. You sometimes think there's one living in your closet and another one living under your bed. Or that when you go downstairs to the cellar. You got your werewolves. You got your vampires. You got your reanimated corpses. Your flesh golems. A la Dr. V. 
Victor von Frankenstein's monster. You got your phantasms, your ghosts, your demons, your lower level astral entities, your ghouls, your goblins, your hobgoblins, your dwarves, your trolls. Wampus cats. Little people. Ogres. Dragons. Bugbears. Bear walkers. Say, oh, you know, I'm trying to explain things away. Oh, it's this, that, the other. It's a trick of the light. Smoke and mirrors, a mirage. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How's that explain away? <clears throat> a phone call from beyond the grave. How does that explain away? Oh, it's a mass hallucination. There was something in the water. Okay. But when the hallucination is consistent, that is, when 500 people all take the same psychoactive item and not only hallucinate, but hallucinate the same thing at the same time, then I would have to put it to you that they're not imagining what they see, but they're really seeing it. They're all on the same vibrational frequency. That's why they all see the same thing. If it was mere poisoning of the brain causing delusions, then it would be completely random. They would all see different things. Bigfoot. Some of the earliest monsters in America that you never heard of, uh, that were just as real as our monsters are today, and who are our monsters today? Are they much more real than we like to think of them? But have they taken the place 
um, in our hearts and minds where there used to be boogeymen Boogie coming up next on Coast to Coast. And this is the product. About the boogie woogie man. Uh, keep your lights on as long as you can. Feel like you've tried everything for your sore joints? Well, it's time to move on to something more effective at improving joint health. New shift, move free ultra. More effective than two regular glucosamine and chondroitin in just one little pill. Why? Because it's a breakthrough 211 formula with hyaluronic acid plus type 2 collagen to activate your own immune system and help repair joint cartilage. It's based on a 90-day human clinical study. Move on to something more effective. New Move Free Ultra. <laughs> okay, callers, let's go to last week. Molly, who did beat Barack Obama? I just keep thinking, Nick versus Obama in a debate. Nick beats Obama hands down. So, you're a new gal? I know he'll fight to take back our country. That's all that matters to my Look at these stupid radio commercials that are for Newt Gingrich, but then they claim that they're not for anybody, but they're like trying to make it sound like he's a human being, you know? <clears throat> Pretty funny. I don't know. It's, it's weird for him to crawl out of the rock that he came out from under after all these years. I mean, he spent the 90s uh, try to dismantle NPR. You guys got a head that looks like five cabbages duct taped together. I mean, uh, he looks like some sort of evil mongoloid from Zyder Z. He can't possibly think he's going to win. But uh, he's going to keep running anyway. Well, they're all a bunch of fucks anyhow. I can't picture myself voting for any of these assholes. Jim Scaife because he just text messaged me. Vodka Jim Scaife. Madman.
Oh, people were never really interested in converting the people that they found here, but, but really, really wanted to wipe them out. Chemical warfare. Man. You know, they were very generous in their own way. In the winter time, they handed out blankets with fucking smallpox in them. Thank you very much. That's right. Germ warfare in the 1800s. That's right. Sounds like a bunch of fucking rocket scientists to me. Bears are evil. Right? That's, that's deep. That's deep. That shows you intelligence and culture. Who knows what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The bears are minions of the devil because. Because if you try to pet them, they'll bite you. I don't know what. I don't know what they based that on. They probably had some puritanical asshole who thought he was grizzly man. You know? He probably tried to pet them and give them names and stuff and wouldn't bit his head off. And the rest of the Puritans got mad and said, These animals are from the devil. Hey, wait a minute now. They, have, they got bears in Europe too, man. You think they'd fucking know? You don't go up and try to pet a bear. They got them in Europe, too. They already knew what bears were before they showed up in the New World. No, I guess the Puritans are just fucking stupid, man. Bears are demons. Bears are fucking bears, man. Just leave them the fuck alone. Let them eat their salmon and their honey. You know. Leave them the fuck alone. If you don't try to give them names and pet them and uh, get, you know, try to make them ride unicycles, then they won't fucking eat you. God damn it. I thought we were talking about Bigfoot. And it's not as good as yammering out about bunch of stiffs, a bunch of losers, a bunch of stiffs. I don't know why the pilgrims got kicked out of Europe. These are a bunch of uptight, stiff religious fanatics. Sunday wasn't enough for them. They wanted it every day of the year. 
Everybody else is like, it's too much, you know, you want to have some fun. You want to have some fun once in a while, you know, save that for Sunday. That's why they kicked them out. Bunch of weirdos. Bunch of people, you know, beat up on themselves for feeling, you know, feeling horny. You know. Oh, I'm horny, I want to whack off, I better... I better go beat myself up and ask Jesus for forgiveness. Come on. He's got more important shit to do than worry about whether or not you're going to beat off. It doesn't even enter into... You think he, he, he wastes his time with shit like that? Come on. Get real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 